this program, let's just, which is a program you have designed for the orchestration of your praise and of your glory. You know, a, a plan you have to impact the lives of your people. We thank you for this evening. We commit ourselves into your hands. We commit the special guests to you, the worship team, the technical uh, persons, the hosts. We commit all of us to your hands. We ask that we be hidden under the shadows of your wings. We ask that your glory be over us and that your spirit will breathe life upon us this evening. We ask for help from above. We ask that you make your servants not to speak from your very heart. Make their tongues like the pen of a ready writer. Let there be seed for the sower. Let there be bread for the eater. And at the end of the day, give us every vocation to bless and to worship you. Be thou exalted, O Lord our God, forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You are welcome. Uh, the Abuja worship team, are you set? The Abuja worship team, please. We are here. We are here. Can we have two worship songs? Okay. Thank you. We give glory to the Lord. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. To the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. To the Lord. He honor to the Lord. We give honor to the Lord. We give honor to the Lord, He reigns. He reigns, He reigns. We give honor to the Lord. To the Lord, we give power. He reigns. To the Lord, He reigns. He reigns. We give power to the in the highest. Forever 
Check your your bandwidth, your internet seems a bit unstable, and some um, breakings. Uh, we thank the Lord for tonight, and we are having tonight the 14th yes. episode of Let's Gist. And it's a youth program, but like I said earlier in some for some times, uh, it's an interface between the older generation and the younger generation, because we understand that the younger generation have a lot to learn from the older generation, while the older generation need to also learn and understand the younger generation. And that's the reason why you have many fathers and mothers around who will not speak at all. It is because it's meant to be an interface. And this evening, we are having, we started in the month of September, uh, a topic, solutions to the challenges and pressures of youths in a contemporary society. Now we try to also get feedbacks from the youths. We got some feedbacks after the last one, and then we'll, so we'll, we'll use it to adjust a little bit our program this time. But let me welcome our resource persons, 
First of all, we thank the Lord, our brother and father in the house, Professor Fred Adegoke, could not be present at uh, the last episode. We thank the Lord that um, it's very much around today, spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. And then um, by way of introduction, Brother Fred uh, has been a friend to me, particularly for close to 45 years, known since our days was at UI, I was at IFE, and we thank the Lord, he's a trusted, reliable, solid father in the house. And uh, Brother Fred, you are very much welcome. Thank you very much, Brother Kola and Sister Remy. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And last uh, month, we had our sister, Sister Nonso Bisong. She's a mother in the house and also a professor at uh, the University of Calabar. Sister Noni, you are welcome again. <laughs> yes, that last, yeah, your phone is, your microphone is muted. Last time was quite posterous. She had to do the job of two persons, but it was such a fantastic time. The feedback from the youth was wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Lord. you very much. Uh, nice to be here today. Amen. And then we have our inquirers. You know, this is a youth program. The youths are going to do the asking of the questions. We are just um, coordinating. And so you should be ready. They are fielded questions from their fellow youths on the topic. So we have two inquirers, they are youths. And then we have Glory on Lamigo K. You are welcome, Glory. Thank you very much, sir. And then we have uh, Chiemela Chike, a very popular broadcaster. <laughs> You are very much welcome, Jemela. Thank you so much, Kia. Yeah, thank you. God bless you all. And so we're going to just kick off right away because um, from the feedbacks that we got from between the last time and now, uh, during the last time, I think the, uh, the resource person, the main resource person spoke and gave a forward. But um, from our fielding of um, feedback, they prefer that they should ask you questions right away. They feel it's, they are the ones who are, you know, in the heat. So they want to ask you questions and then you give, a remark, you give your remarks at the end of the day. And so they have some questions for you. And then because we have so much to do, because we're going to, they are going to ask you, there is the inquirers, we call them inquirers, they're in touch with the youths. They are going to ask you questions. They have so many, we see as many of them as you can answer. And thereafter, we'll throw open to uh, the, the, the floor to those who want to ask questions by raising of hands or who submit their questions either to the inquirers or to the uh, host, to the admin. And thereafter, uh, we'll give very little time, about 10 minutes each, to the uh, resource persons, to our guest speakers, to just round up. I'm sure this is different from the system we adopted the last time. So since they said they prefer to ask you questions first and then you wrap up later on. I think we just go it the way they want. So uh, for the next 40 minutes, I'll turn over to uh, Lori, Olamigo K, and Chimilachi K to ask our brethren questions. They will, you let them know how you want, whether you're asking any of them particularly or you want any of them to, or you want them um, any of them to answer. When you are five minutes more, I will just wave to you. So, but you have the next 40 minutes. So you can go ahead. Okay, th thank you so much, sir. Um, once again, it's a pleasure to be here um, together with Chi Miller. And we, by God's grace, are going to be asking. Um, I want to confirm I'm, I'm loud and clear before I go on. I'm very loud and clear. Yeah. Um, am, I, am I loud and clear, please? I think so. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, awesome. Awesome, right. Okay, so um, by God's grace, we're going to be asking a few questions we've been able to gather from um, youth um, across Nigeria, Africa, and the world, basically, um, regarding issues that you know um, we are facing 
um, either individu individu individually or you know collectively as um, you know as as people. You know, um, some of them are you know specifically directed towards, uh, or some of them are peculiar to our generation. You know, and some of you know the issues that you know are really you know happening now. And so we will be beginning with um, a question that has to do with the hard issue. Um, I'll be directing that to um, uh, Professor Fred. Um, and so the question goes to us. I have been privileged to grow in the things of God, understanding some of his heart for the present time. But my fellowship seems to be stuck in a cycle, a pattern of old revelations lacking in the power of God. What do I do? I don't want to leave. That's the question. <laughs> well, thank you, Glory, for that question. I think the question is clear. Uh, I like the way you began uh, by saying that some of the issues and some of the questions are questions that are peculiar to your generation. Uh, I think it's very, very important, uh, both for us as parents and for the young people mm -hmm. too, to understand that they belong to a different generation. This is, uh, uh, and also understand what that means. What's, what's are the, because the reason why we have um, clash of ideas mm -hmm. and the way, the reason why we have generation gap is because we, the older one, refuse to recognize um, what is happening to the younger ones, uh, the youth, as we call them, and the youth themselves, for them to overcome and deal with the issues they are facing, they also have to understand that they belong to a particular generation. Um, yes, we are Christians, we are Bible believers, but we're in this world. Jesus said, he said, he said, when he was going, he prayed for his disciples that they would be here, or that the Holy Spirit will come and be with them here. Uh, he didn't, if, if he wanted us out of here, the day you're saved, he will just take you out. But he wanted us to be here. And he says, we are the light of this world. So, so we, the world is evolving and things are changing and we live here. And, and there's no way we can live in isolation. God did not design it that way. So I think it's important for us to understand the characteristics of this present generation. Uh, parents and people themselves must know that they belong to a peculiar, indeed peculiar generation. And a lot of their thinking and a lot of what is happening to them is as a result of, 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 of the trend and the development. The world, things will continue to change. The world 40 years ago is not the same thing today. Uh, and, and we have to live with that. And even the Bible also uh, encourages us to, to discern the times, to understand the times, because the times will change. Uh, it says, let him that has ears, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. So. God himself, is, is he doesn't change, but he's a dynamic God. So I just wanted to give that as a little background to some of the things um, that you are asking. Um, we have to understand that this is a peculiar generation. Uh, anyone that is born after 1996 to this time uh, belongs to what they call the Generation Z. Uh, and there are a few characteristics about Generation Z. They, they, they grew up with technology, you know, so, and you can't take that or leave it. We can pray till tomorrow. Technology is all, all around us and we have to live with it. Um, this generation grew up with technology. They grew up with the internet. In my own time, when we were growing up, there was no internet. There was no uh, technology the way we have it. We didn't have it. Social media was not there. This generation grew up with social media and they are generally tech addicted, you know, and so on. So just to give you an idea, so when you are thinking the way you're thinking, this fellow grew up in a, in a fellowship, committed to the fellowship, but the fellowship is not moving as fast as uh, he probably would want. Uh, use the word, the, the fellowship is stuck in a circle. 
It's like, you know, the same old things, the same old ways of doing things. And he's like, how do I deal with that? And he also mentioned that he doesn't want to leave, uh, which is a good thing, but we have to resolve this because uh, if you don't resolve it, if you're not able to fit in, then uh, it will be a loss situation for you and for the fellowship because you will not be able to um, get the best for yourself. And God wants the best for you. God wants you to grow. God wants you to have the liberty to work in him and to know him. But if you're stuck in a place and it's like a bondage, it's like you don't have the liberty, your spirit is not free, but you have to be there maybe because your parents are there you have to be there because oh, everybody expects you to be there. But you know in your heart that you're just not fitting in. You're not getting the best. You're not thriving as a young person. You're not, you're not growing the way uh, you should. People around you may think you're growing and you think you're doing very well. But inside you, you know. And, and that's a dilemma. That's a big dilemma. And I think we need to recognize this. And this is why, again, I'm happy that Brother Kola said the older generations are also here. The same things below, we need to understand it, dealing with this youth. And the youth also must understand what is going on in them. Uh, uh, the period of the youth is probably the most, it's, it's the most challenging and the most difficult in all the stages of life and the most misunderstood. Even by the people going through it, they don't understand what they're going through. Because the, the, the changes and the, what is going on is tremendous. It, it's, it's nothing like it. Turn up there and pick the test on common. From childhood to adult, the whole thing. So let me just limit this to this question. I, I, I guess what needs to be done in this particular case is to try and engage. I am happy because he doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to leave. Uh, the best way is, is to try and engage. Uh, engage with the, the, the fellowship. Most of us think that things can change or that the older people cannot change. Uh, and so we shut in, the older ones shut in too, and the gap remains. But the truth is that a lot of the older folks too, if they get the right information, if they know better, uh, they are likely to also do uh, differently from what they're doing. So I, I, would, I would suggest that, that this young person should engage, not just close up, not just isolate, engage with the leaders of that fellowship, engage with the fathers and mothers in that fellowship, not by challenging them, not by taking them on, but trying to um, ask questions and relate um, where you are coming from, hoping that they will understand where you're coming from. And you never know, there could be changes. Changes can begin to come. I know fellowships that have been rigid and then something happens and a lot of changes begin to come in. And then it's also important to engage with your, your colleagues, your peers, your age mates in that same fellowship. You all need to come together and engage because again, it's easy for you to communicate. You need the support system. Uh, and if you're not getting the support system from the older one, you need a support system from within yourself. I'm sure you're not the only young person in that fellowship. There are other young people there. So you again need a support system coming together to pray and to study the word of God together. And that way, I believe that you will be able to engage the fellowship and um, God help you. So again, I want to say that, uh, and again, as a young person, continue to do your best to develop yourself. A lot is, depends on you. And with today's, thankfully, this generation is, is, uh, is uh, versatile with technology. There's a lot you can get to help you with the ritual. The messages are good things. Use your, your phone. Catch me, Chipepe. Tap down on and give. So all of this deal with the situation. Let me just leave it there so that uh, maybe you know, the one.
coming. But again, um, it's a it's a difficult situation, and I understand that you can be in a fellowship that is not moving fast enough. Um, they're traditional, and, and we tend to get stuck once we start doing something. It's just a matter of years. We just keep doing the same thing and doing the same thing, and it becomes a circle. And uh, and what happens is that once you keep doing the thing, it loses life. It loses. It becomes a rote. It becomes tradition, and that's what happens to the denomination. They started well, and the message was hot when it began. But because they just remain there and keep doing the same old thing, they lost the steam. So and we have to move forward. But for the young person, we have to deal with that. Uh, you must not. You must engage. Engage with your colleagues. Engage with the older ones. And you must also keep focused and keep developing yourself. Let me just uh, take a little break here so that uh, we can get other inputs. Okay. Uh, f f thank you so much, sir. Um, Anton, also, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, maybe just um, one minute, okay. please. One minute yeah. tops. Let me just right. add a, a little thing to what uh, Brother Fred has said. You know, this youth is saying that the fellowship is not moving is not moving um, fast or whatever. I wish I understand exactly what the youth means by saying the fellowship is not moving fast. You know, we don't know, I don't know exactly what the person has in mind by saying the fellowship is not moving fast. You know, like Brother Fred earlier said, there is a Z generation, digital age generation. So you people are also too much on the fast lane you know, too much on the first lane. So the counsel I want to give is on both sides because we don't know exactly what is driving this youth. It may be too much on the first lane and lack specials. The Bible says that he that believeth shall not make haste. Now, if, um, like I said, I don't really know what it means by, but felt, assuming he feels that the way the fellowship is conducted, let me know, use example of what I normally hear youths complain about, which I believe, like what my friend has said, we need change. If you come to fellowship, it's so boring, you know, even the word is not exciting, it keep either instead of preaching the word, you are flogging the brethren, you know, such things. It can really be boring. There's need for change. And if such is the case, what I will advise such fellowship, thank God we have some people who are elders in churches around here, we will not lose our youths. The youths are the future of the church. And if we keep um, doing what we are doing and refuse to change, this use will all take off. And you see old, old people in church. So what we'll do is, in such a case, is to organize a meeting, call for a family meeting. Even in, your, even in our houses, when we feel that things are not moving right, we call our children to a family meeting. You call the youths in the church for a family meeting. And that youth, of course, like he has said, you go and confine in somebody, maybe an elder, uncle or daddy, please look at some of the things, you know, the way we are feeling, can something be done? <laughs> and then the person now takes it to the elders, is to call for a youth meeting, call for a family meeting and give them opportunity to air their feelings. Let them tell you what and what they don't like, maybe, um, that you would not allow us to play, but we want to play band in this church, but some people are feeling that playing band is Babylon. You know, we want to introduce some musical instruments that will engage us now, or we have some, uh, at times there are some ministrations we like to share. Maybe let us join in singing, or maybe let us uh, be joining some opening prayers. You can call us to come and share one or two things, you know, be free is your father's house, but do it respectfully. Do it respectfully. So if that youth is really genuine, is a real genuine body, the way things are, you know, caged, everybody's caged, you can't talk, you are in a, like the, you know, the, the church is run in a dictatorial manner. You can't talk, you can't express yourself, but you really know that the word here is true. Like he said, we will pray, but we need to talk 
to our youth. And then for the elders, we need to open up. We need to listen to these people. We will not, the way the church of God is run, you cannot say must, you must do this, the use, you must do that. It doesn't work like that. Instead, we make the robots, the robots, they sit down with us and be looking at you. If they can actually do your own thing and they'll be smiling in their hearts. Immediately they have a little this thing, they take off. But that's not what we want. We really want to accommodate them and listen to them. At times these youths have some, some, some ideas. Even in your own family, at times in those days, I remember in a family meeting, my children will come and say, look, we introduce this, we introduce that, we just come and sing. This one brought guitar. They brought a piano organ and introduce real worship. He changed the family meeting, the family prayer meeting. It's not the people just come in the morning and sing, oh, we just sing one song, chorus is like, but by the time they introduce organ, brought guitar and all that, it changed. In fact, worship became sweeter and all that. So we must listen to them. That's my, what I want to add. Thank you very much. Over to you, um, Glory. Thank you so much, Ma. That was a beautiful quote. Thank you so much. Chibla. All right. Um, thank you very much, um, Glory. Um, thank you very much, Antino. So, so the next question we have here is still on the same line. Please confirm that you can hear me. Yes. 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 Yeah. All right. All right. Thank God. So this question here is still on the line of um, seeking for excellence. Someone asked, I want to do more in the house fellowship, but we don't seem to care about excellence. I look at other places outside who do not have as much revelation as we have, but they care about excellence and doing things well. What should I do? That's the question. I, I guess Uncle Fred can start from there to give us a response. Uh Again, I think that, that that's a good question. Um, again, I think it's uh, an indication, a characteristics of uh, uh, this peculiar generation, which we must understand. Uh, because one of the things that um, people like you, the, this current generation, the Generation Z, as we want to call it, they, they, they seem to want to get things done. They have this um, social justice kind of thing. They're, they're social justice warriors, if you like. And, and that's what informed the NSAS that you saw. It was spontaneous, but it was all Generation Z. It was all young people who are between under 30 who came out and they, because they want to see things work, they want to see the excess, and that's what you see. I have a, 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 a Pentecostal church near my house here, um, Koza, it's called, and, and you just need to see the discipline. You need to see when they come to church, even on a, a midweek service, they are all impeccably dressed, they are neat with their ties on, and the young men have their suit on, and you know the, the ladies are well dressed. They don't take anything for granted. They, you know, every the setting is almost impeccable. The instruments is impeccable. The environment, everything, the excellence. They just go for excellence. So, so I recognize that that is also uh, a characteristic of this this generation. Um, they want to do things. When they want to do things, they want it done well because they're living in a very competitive world. They're seeing what is going on. So I think again, that we need to recognize that and um, create space, let things be done. Typical things you would find in our setting is that in the name of, we don't have a pastor, in the name of, we don't have a bishop, in the name of, you know, people can be led by the spirit. People come late to meetings, for example. People don't do things. Excellent, that spirit of excellence. You know, getting things done properly, making sure you go for the best. I mean, only the best is good for Jesus. Uh, David said, he said, I won't give anything to the Lord if it doesn't cost me something. 
you know, and and you don't come. Uh, even the woman who gave her widow's might, it was the best. It was everything she had to get. So, so that spirit of excellence, I think it's a characteristic of this generation, which is positive, which we need to tap in. And I think um, it's very important that uh, things should be done properly. Whatever we find our hands doing, let's do it well. Let's um, uh, prepare well for the meetings, um, be decent in our approach, go for the best that we can get. I'm not asking for us to compete or to do things, you know, but I am saying that um, the spirit of excellence belongs to God's children. We, we, uh, it's only Christ uh, that can make one excellent. It's only one that can lead us and give us the right thing. So I think that um, that is also very important. And I think that we need to encourage our young people to put their best in because if, if they don't come to church and be given the space to put their best in that energy because the, the period of the youth is when they are peak the health is peak the experiences are peak the changes are peak everything is is, 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 is going on in the young man and is going through a whole lot and um, you, the energy is is, is, is is gushing and they have to be channeled properly and put in a proper perspective. So I think that we need to encourage, create space for them, let them do it and, and guide them and let them do it well. And I think young people too should be willing to listen to counsel. Um, don't throw away the spirit of excellence, do it, start doing it and don't even wait for, for them to give you the space, whatever you find your hand doing. If you're faithful in a little, God will give you and make you become, you know, give you much. So I think that that spirit of excellence is, is, is very strong. And more than any generation, we find it today. They want to do things well. They want to dress well and nothing wrong in dressing well too. They want to do the best things. They want to, but with the help of the, older ones, the parents, we can guide them and make sure that um, um, we do things well because the spirit of excellence is, is, is Christ that is that, that, that can give excellence and can help us. So um, just to drop that, I want to add to that. Okay. Th th thank you so much. Okay. Um, th 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 thank you so much, sir. Um, I'm going to be asking the next question to Antin on two. And we are coming back to the familiar topic of marriage, right? Um, so the question goes to us. I want to get married to someone, someone in my fellowship. But the elders don't think I am ready or prepared. I think they don't believe I'm up to the standard of the person. How can I go about this place? Antinon, so. <laughs> That's a very interesting question. Hmm. The person wants to get married to somebody in his fellowship, and the elders don't feel he is ready or prepared for it. And what is he going to do about that? Number one, um, this young man, you're in a particular fellowship. The elders see you. The question I would have wanted to ask this young man is, what makes you think that the, fellowship, that the elders feel you are not prepared? You see, this, this question she people are asking, there is no, I can't speak, there are no right or wrong answers. Do you understand? Because we don't know the, is that they're all hypothetical cases. Exactly. If we have exactly what the elders have said, then we can treat it and say this is how it should be. Now, if the elders are saying you are not serious, yes, there are times we look at some young people. There are some young people I look around. I say you are not serious. You can't marry. I've told a young man like that before. A young man who wanted to marry a sister, engaged to the sister, broke up this relationship. A year after, he came up again. And why did he break up the relationship? The father, who is also an elder in one of the branches of our fellowship, told the son 
that the girl he wants to marry has their background, whether it's mermaid or what or what, it has one spirit in the background, you know, that kind of thing. So the young man broke the relationship. The, this lady came and told me, I said, don't bother. A year or two years after that, they met again somewhere in Lagos and he was still interested. So this young girl came and told me, I said, bring the young man. I told the young man, you are not serious. I don't even know whether you know where you are going to so that you don't carry this sister and take, go to a place that we are not sure of. How can your father tell you something you go and break a relationship? He said he wasn't convinced, but since his father has said, has your, is it your father who told you to go and now um, re, come and propose again? So I told the young man, I said, look, I, anyway, I, I shared so many things to him, told him, please go and find a bearing. When you find a bearing, you come and propose. I don't know where you're carrying. This one is my daughter. I don't know where you are carrying this, my daughter, to. You don't even know where you're going. Anyway, he confided in me, really, that he needs to do something. And he took it seriously. He spent some time praying and all that. And eventually, you know, they got married. And I met the father, who is an elder in one of the fellowships. I said, you see, what you will go doing? Why will you go and see vision for your son? He said, no, it's not the one, no. I said, you are the one. Your son told me. And because of it, your son broke this relationship. But anyway, the summary is that they are married today happily. And I told him, you are not eating alone. You don't remember me. You're eating alone. So now for this young man, there must be something eh, that made the elders say, you are not serious. Because a young man who is getting married, my first question I will ask you is, what is your vision about the kingdom? If you can't answer that question, you're not serious. Because you must have a vision about where you are going before you go and carry somebody's daughter to follow you and go. So where's your vision? Where are you heading to? It must be clear. What are your plans in life? That's what, these are questions we, have, we ask any young man. It doesn't mean that you must be established or no, but at least the young man has plans for his life. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking. This is my, you know, you know that, ah, this guy is really thinking something you know, he's being serious about his life. It's just that maybe he doesn't have the means now. Then for such a person, I'm happy. He knows where he's going to. And then he can lead about his sister. So that is one angle. That young man should sit down and ask himself, why is it that the elders in the church, they're protecting that sister? Assuming the elders have a reason a cogent reason to say this young man is not, assuming the young man, they hardly see him in church. He comes to church whenever he likes. He is not, he doesn't participate in anything. Uh, he doesn't come for youth meetings. He doesn't attend anything, you know, meet youth meetings in church. The young man doesn't attend when youths are, um, anything the youths are doing doesn't participate. They don't see him regularly in church. For me, I would say the young man is not serious. Now I want to come and pick a sister in church. Why you pick this sister? What are you going to do? In such a case, the elders are right to say that the person is not serious. So what the person will do is to go get serious. Like this other young man, I told that he, he is not serious. Go and settle down and look into your life. Because I would have asked such a person some questions. Then he will go and settle that when he's ready, he will come and propose. Then on the other hand, um, for the other one, the elders, I, it is really tough for me to say the elders are wrong. It's not one person. For the elders of the church to look around and say, oh, this brother wants to marry this sister. And this brother, is not, I don't think he's fit. He's not serious. Please, I will beg of that brother, if he is serious, let him humble himself, let him pray. Let him approach a brother. Maybe that young man may be very sincere, but there must be a message he is sending out that is making people misunderstand him. There is the message he's sending out that is showing people or showing the elders that he is not serious. He may be serious, but, you know, handling things casually like that. 
So he needs to, there must be something he's doing. He really needs to go confined in one of the elders and talk or let the elders call him or he go and approach the elders and say, look, you think I'm not serious. Look, I'm serious. I can't do it. In those days when I was raising my children, there are times I look at one of them, I say, look, you, you are not serious. So you are not serious. After the person can come to me and say, hey, mommy, you think that I'm not serious. Look, mommy, let me tell you, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Ah, I would even be surprised that the person I thought is not serious. So, you know, he has plans. So he, this guy has plans. It's not as if he doesn't have plans. It happens like that. So, but this one, he must be sending out information that is making the, all the elders in the church to say, no, we want to protect our daughter. So please let that young man get, my solution is get to one of the elders you trust and confide in him, open up. And I believe the elder will tell you, look, this is why we said it, this, 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 this. I felt I wish that that person can come to me and let me counsel the person really what to do and find out what these things are. That's how, what I have to say. Gloria, are you hearing me? Over to you. Yes, my love. Okay. Thank you so much. That was, um, that was really Thank you. Thank you. Gloria, Melis. Chimla, please. Um, yes, thank you very much for that. Um, still on the question of family and marriage, there's this question here. And it says, I'm the first graduate of the family. Chimla, you are breaking. Um, yes. You have a device. You have a device. Okay. Well, while, I'm not hearing she, you again. Okay. Fine. Okay. So maybe maybe while she corrects that, um, let me ask um, another question in her state. Actually, the question she's trying to ask. Um, okay. So it's a question about the political space. So I'm just going to read, read that out. Um, I'll direct this to um, Uncle Fred. Um, so the question goes to us. I feel like I am called to the political space, but it is a dangerous place where you have to do terrible things. I am not ready to get corrupted, yet I feel like I'm called here to spread the truth of the gospel. That's the question. Uncle Fred, sir. Mm. Thank you. That's, that's a good question. Um... I wouldn't know where this young man is right now, what is his age, whether he's still in school or whether he's graduated from the university or whether he has a, is in a career now uh, <coughs> or um, that the businessman is self-employed. Um, I wouldn't know all of that. <coughs> it's important to have um, those information. Uh, like he rightly said, <laughs> politics is not something, especially in Nigeria. Indeed, politics anywhere in the world, it's um, it's it's it, it's it's the murky waters. It's really it's not something you just wake up and jump into um, at all, because one, you have to become uh, a member of the political party, and the political parties have their written ideology, they have the unwritten one too. Uh, and so many things happen uh, when it comes to competing and getting power. So, so it's, it's a very difficult situation. And for Nigeria, it's even more difficult. Um, um, so so I, I want to, I would like to counsel this individual to wait further on the Lord. Um, like Monso alluded to the other time, he that delivered will not make haste. Um, you, need to, you need to turn this around and take your time and wait on the Lord. Uh, and then the Lord will um, give directions. Um, so so uh, things are the way they are in the country today. Uh, young people are getting political aware and there's this political consciousness that is coming on. The social media is a wash of political um, inclinations, political um, um, talk all over the place. And young people are in the vanguard. They're leading this thing and comments are all over the place. But uh, going into politics goes beyond just the social media. It's not just about making comments on the social media and all of that. It involves, uh, it's, it's a complete lifestyle. 
and um, the world itself is controlled by different spirits and um, the spirit that uh, is working in the system is a terrible spirit and you really need to get your bearing right um, to be able to jump into the uh, into the fray so I, I would suggest to this young man uh, I, I don't want to say God is not speaking to you it's very possible and in fact we need young people today who will uh, become politically conscious. I will, I will ask whoever this fellow is to begin to exercise um, his influence in his local sex, wherever he is. Um, begin to show leadership, begin to, um, if you're working, for example, in your workplace, if you live in a community, you don't have to think of joining APC or PDP or, <laughs> or, or oh yeah, but you can you can to 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 be politically aware is to be conscious of your environment. And there's so many things wrong in our community. I mean, I live in a community here, and so many things are wrong. And we need young people who will step forward and volunteer, uh, and who will I mean. We talk of Barack Obama today, who eventually became the president of the United States. He started as a young man volunteering. He, he was a community mobilizer. He started mobilizing for change in his community. And that's how they noticed him. And uh, that's how he now went and uh, got into Senate. And from Senate, you know, he, he, he just became the president. So I, I would say get involved in society. Look. Uh, the Lord says we are the salt of the earth. The salt goes into the soup and makes a difference. Uh, he says we are the light of the world. And you don't light a candle and put it under the bushel. You put it uh, where everybody can see so that you can give light. So that we can be like a city set on a hill. So Christians are to make a difference. If we're not making a difference, I mean, you're working in a school, you're teaching in a school or you're in a university, why don't you begin to consent, conscientize people, begin to speak to people, to their conscience, to do the right thing, that you don't have to cheat. You, you have to go to work and do the right thing. You don't have to be wicked. You don't have to defraud your brother. You don't have to um, 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 uh, come late to work. Um, I, I teach, I mean, and one of my finest moments is when I'm in the classroom with my students. Um, uh, I've done that for almost 40 years now, and I enjoy doing it. And, and, and one of the things I do is conscientize my students. I, I, in the contents that I am teaching, I also pass a message across. And believe me, a lot of them are in touch with me today. The impact, you just don't know the impact you make on their lives. When they send you messages and they send you some of them are all over the world today, and a lot of them are still in contact. Even during this strike, some of them say, hi, oh God, we hear you've not been paid from nowhere. Send me money. Just to, you know, these are, these are you know, former students of mine. So I think that you can start from somewhere and begin to be, begin to affect your environment. That, that's politics, that's political awareness. Begin to, instead of thinking of going to via for, you may down the line via for something and become a house of rep or something. So don't lose that vision, but um, begin to lead, show leadership. Our society needs honest people today. So this Nigeria is going down the drain today because nobody's standing for the truth, nobody's doing the right thing. Uh, and, and young people today, uh, the ones to, to 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 they, they are they are partners uh, not to not not leaders of tomorrow but today and you can make the change so i will encourage this brother keep your vision pray about it and begin to do something where you are god will tell you something to do yeah. um get out there and talk to people organize market women get out there and volunteer get out there and that's the way people will notice you and see the gift in you and, and not just go and say you want to become this and 
people want to buy for this and you don't see their impact and you go there and just steal money because they don't have the so uh, i mean i just want to encourage this young person and uh, go with It's as though uh, Brother Fred has a um, bandwidth problem. Gloria, are you here? No, I think he, I think his his, his internet is glitching. Um, yeah, yeah we should run up this one. Which are very immediate. I mean, we're Christians. We carry the Bible uh, with our community until. Okay, so um, Uncle has gone off. I guess he'll be back shortly, maybe. So I think I'm okay. I mean, I got bumped off, but fine. I think uh, mm. uh, Uncle can go on. Somebody can say something else, yes. Uh, okay. Um, in fact, what I want to say is that, you know, you mentioned that point. Immediately you asked that question. What came to my mind is that let the person test his political muscles around his environment first, you know. It's good to have um, such desires, but test it around you first. And it has already outlined the things the person needs to do. Because for you to venture into the, that um, political scene, you know, you need wisdom. You need focus. You need strong character, integrity. Look there. They have, have attended one of these meetings. You see, they call themselves political crocodiles. They are really crocodiles. So mm -hmm. you must have strength of character, integrity. They must know you are unshakable. They'll be able to say, ah, Oga will not do this, so Oga will not do this. And if they know you by that, they keep off you. So like he rightly um, said, if the person is already working, you are teaching in school, let somebody know you as a teacher who defends your students. You defend what is right. You have integrity in your place of work. Even if you're a student now, among your student body, if you're in the student union, you have integrity because student union government now, they are sitting like lots. So we have students union parliament where I lecture. If you see them, the cars they are driving, they will struggle. I have <laughs> waited into students in this thing in my department. Oh, this one, they fight for election. This was a girl who was doing well in school. He needed badly to be the uh, deputy vice chancellor, the deputy, what do you call it? President. Her president and uh, her vice president. She got it. And they were flying to Abuja, flying to Abuja. And Haji, uh, CGPA started nose diving like this. I called her and said, leave this thing. They are making lots of money. So, all those things are the things, there are a lot of temptations there. There are a lot of temptations. You can say, I will not do this. Don't say that until they carry five million and put on your laps. Mm -hmm. you, like, you see five million on your laps. You can't. <laughs> yes, a colleague of mine told me when my husband was head of the department, he said, he came and told me, he said, Madam, thank God the organ didn't make me coordinator of a particular program. He, he said, Madam, can you imagine? That was then. He said, Madam, can you imagine? You're just like this. Somebody brings 50,000 in front of you. You know, you know, madam, it's not easy to resist. I just sat down like that looking at him. That was then, no, 50,000 there was money. He said, hey, you can't 50,000 and put it in front of you. You know what it means? It's not easy to resist. So I'm so happy. <laughs> I was just looking at that man. I said, sorry for you. So these are the things I'm talking. For that young man, please keep that hope alive. If it is of God, wait on it. Pray more. Prepare yourself spiritually to go into that position. And if it is of God at the appointed time, the Lord will make a way for you. Okay, that's all I want to say. Thank you so much, Auntie. Thank you so much, Uncle. Um, over to Chairman. Thank you so much, Auntie. So, um, so I'm going screen. Uh, I think you are still breaking. Uh, 
Chairman, do you have the question she wants to ask? Chairman, um, we can't hear you. Oh, okay, so while, okay, while, while Chairman just maybe I isn't up here, um, let, let me just ask this, which I think is what she wants to ask. Um, how do you deal with the constant pressure to excel in all aspects of life? I'd direct that to Uncle Fred. How do you deal with the constant pressure to excel in all aspects of life? Um, that's also a good question. Uh, it's so right. <laughs> again, uh, young people have to be careful so you don't also <laughs> get yourself into a situation where you um, you just exhaust yourself. You just burn out completely. Uh, because um, I think, first of all, it's good to know that God has a plan for each and every one of us. And that as an individual, God has called you. And um, God has a purpose. He thinks of you. He has a future for you. And uh, he, he will bring you to that expected end. Um, there is pressure today, um, pressure to excel in every area. Uh, the system is moving so, so fast. We're living in a quick generation. People want to get to the top like this. Uh, nobody wants to take time to walk through, land the ropes and go through. You know, People just want to get there. There's pressure. You look around you. You look at your peers. You look everywhere on the social media, on the internet, anywhere you turn. You stay, it's a pressure to excel. Uh, you want to get this, uh, things like even gadgets, you know, you want to get this particular phone, you have an Android phone and you want uh, this phone to keep coming out and, you know, they're pretty expensive. But because the peer pressure comes on and you want to move from this to this and the pressure will never end. And uh, one has to be very careful not to be caught in the rat race of life and trying to keep up to the Joneses and trying to keep up with what is trending. For young people, they always talk about what is trending. And everybody wants to go in that direction. They tell you, uh, this is what is trending now in terms of dressing, in terms of career, in terms of the type of phone you use, in terms of, you know, the trend keeps changing. And the thing is, once you get there, the goalpost moves again and it changes. So you find yourself just going around and wanting to, much as it's important to excel, um, I think young people need to um, understand that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Young people must also learn um, that there is a timing uh, and, that, and that God has a time, he has a purpose for each person. And we must also learn to wait for God's time uh, and also um, learn to, uh, the Bible says that the husband man has patience. After, uh, for, for when he sows the seed, he waits for the early and the latter rain so that he might obtain the promise. Today, people don't want to talk about patience anymore. That language is out. People just want to get it. It's a, it's a quick age. It's, it's a jet age. You just hit the body and you get there. In those days when the computer first came out, you, you hit it and the thing it would be booting and booting. And it, now the, the processors are so fast that as you hit it, you get there. And uh, that's the way life is. It's, it's quick, quick, quick. But it doesn't always work like that. And this is the reason why many young people crash because they just want to get their shortcuts out from wrong cuts. Many of them take to the shortcut because they want to get there on time. People are looking for the quickest way to get a job, you know, and then you get the job, you, you buy the most expensive cars. I mean, you know, I mean, in this country, that's difficult, but uh, out there, I hear them talk about the type of cars they want to buy as a young person just coming out of college because the credit is there and everybody just wants to. And it's all this pressure that you want to be. But you, then you get the credit, you start your life with a lot of credit. 
and then you begin to pray. And, and the biggest bondage you want to get to is, 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 is getting into using your credit card. And there are many people outside the country today who can't get out of that circle. It's a life bondage because there's so much debt that they are servicing. And the system is designed to put you in bondage. So you keep getting more, more, more credit, more, 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 more debts on your neck. And, and it's all the pressure to, to get this, to get that. And, and I think we need to really watch that and be very careful so that we don't, uh, I think each person must know that uh, God has a plan for your life and you must wait and follow that path and don't be a jack of all trade. Don't start something today and abandon. People must learn to follow through and be consistent. Consistency is very important. You start something then and somebody comes and tells you about uh, Bitcoin and tells you about how to make quick money. Uh, and then you leave what you're doing and you jump to that one. And then the thing is not working for you fast. Somebody says, oh, you need to go and do that course. Once you do that course, you get this. You jump again and you go and do that. And your life just goes around in circle. And it's because of pressure. Uh, Chiamela, I see you are laughing. And, uh, you know, these, these are pressure. And, but you must wait on God and know that he has a plan. Be consistent. It may take some time, but you will get there. And don't compare yourself. The Bible says you're, you're a fool if you compare yourself with others. And each person has a path. And you will get there. I can tell you, he has a plan for you. He thinks of you. and His, his thoughts of you are thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and to bring you to an expected end. I think that's very important for young people to know. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I think we shortly have to round up this segment. Okay. Maybe just one, one question more, if there is. Okay, thank you so much. Let me quickly, let me quickly say something. You know, when okay. you're talking about this pressure, pressure sounds as though somebody is being coerced to do something. But when you're under pressure, it's like somebody is coercing you to do something. And this generation, of course, we know is a generation where people are in a, in a hurry to make it. Is there's this rat race. Everybody, the young people, they can't wait to come out from school. Even while in school, they've started making money while in school. You see, life is not hop, step, and jump. You must grow gradually. You have to grow very gradually. The Bible says that the lines are falling upon you in pleasant places. So please, for our Christian youths, don't join in the rat race. Don't join in the rat race. Look, wait upon the Lord. Have a focus, right? Have a direction. Take it one day at a time. Don't be in the rat race. And if you're in so much hurry to make money, you will make, you will make many mistakes. Either you find out that your hands will not be very clean because you are so much in a hurry to make it. There are certain what you would call deals now. <laughs> Even the, the way it sounds, deals. They make deal, deal, deal. Some deals might not be clean. Some deals, because your heart is set on making it, ah, this looks good. That's why a lot of people are being, um, 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 what do you call these people? This morning, uh, hair, they will just uh, defraud them. Come, this, they put something in your lap. Ah, they say I should come and collect money. Send my account. You said. So please, for our believers, that's why you're a child of God. He that believeth will not make haste. The fruit of the Spirit is patience. Mm. Wait upon the Lord. Learn, we must use our spirit. That is what will differentiate us with youths out there. Ability for you, you have something. Ability for you to listen to your spirit. Ability for you to go to the Father in prayer. Ability for you to hear the spirit of God. Even when something is coming legitimately to you, they've given you this job. Is 3.5 3 million a month. Wow, you jump in. Did you pray? Pray first. You have to pray. That one of 3.5 million might not be yours. The one of uh, 200,000 a month. So you can be your Okay. To wait upon the Lord. Discipline ourselves. Praise the Lord. Okay. Over to Hallelujah. you. Th thank, uh, thank you so much, Auntie. Thank you so much, Ma. Um, so we're going to take the final question now. Um, before that, my co -inquiry, in inquirer Chimla would like would like me to apologize on her behalf for you know the poor internet. It's actually being where she is, and that's why it's been breaking. Now to the final question. Actually, we have two final questions, but they are linked together. 
So I'm just going to take them and then um, um, Auntie Nonto and Uncle Fred will just you know, say, say something about them. I think would um, be done. So the first question um, goes to us, um, how can I break free from the hold of masturbation and pornography? That's the first question. Now, the next one related to that is I'm getting too much attention from the opposite sex because of my ministry. How can I cut down on them without being rude? Um, so first question, how can I break free from the hold of masturbation and pornography? And next one related to this is I'm getting too much attention from the opposite sex because of my ministry. How can I cut down on them without being rude? So um, maybe Anton also can go first, then um, Uncle Fred will um, also go. Okay, you want me to take the two together? How yes, can I break free from the hold of pornography and uh, masturbation? Fine, number one, since I'm happy that the person has seen it as a problem and is disturbing the person. So the solution has started because there are some people who are in it, it doesn't mean anything to them. To them, it's normal. So for the fact that this person is worried and is thinking of how to come, off it, and come out of it, it means the solution has already started. Number one, of course, you need to pray. If you start praying by yourself and start refuting it and start rejecting it, it is it's a spiritual battle. That one is battle. So you need to battle it yourself. You need to take hold of scriptures. Look for relevant scriptures to that and use it. And as you pray and battle, you also need to practicalize it. Practicalize what you've prayed. The Bible says, abstain from every, you know, evil thing, every appearance of evil, abstain. In fact, that is one of the problems where young people are being hooked. This social media, this social media, they open it, they see all sorts of things. You see, you see a naked woman, you keep on looking, you keep on looking. As you keep on looking, more things will be opening up. There are certain things you need, you, your spirit will just reject it, you just remove it and go to other things. You, you must learn to put your body under control. Paul say he puts his body under control. You put your body, how do you put it? It is by putting it under, it's by practice. You've got to start practicing it. You will start with self-deliverance. It's where you find out that, that self-deliverance, because if the person you saw, first of all, this anger must well up in you. No, this is messing me up. After watching this thing, you go into masturbation, it's messing me up, it's defiling me, it's draining me of anointing. That one just drains off your anointing. You see yourself on the ground. So if you find out that you've, um, by the time you start praying and start ministering to yourself, speaking, you add fasting because it's a spirit you are driving out. It will go with fasting. You add fasting and pray and insist and rebuke and reject. You must do all these things consistently. You will notice that it is breaking if you're serious. But if you've done all that and it's not working, then you approach a, a brother in your church. If you approach a, a brother you know or approach an elder you trust and confine in them, you need serious ministration deliverance because these are spirits the person has opened himself up to this spirit so that when it comes it has no control the spirits have now overwhelmed the person then you go to the elders for prayers the elders naturally if it is here how we do here we ask you to spend some time talking to the lord about it repenting fasting and then on the appointed day they will come and stay with you and break this yokes after breaking the yoke, you don't go and relax and say, hey, brother, so so have prayed for me, I'm free. No, what they have done is to help you stay these spirits out. You will do, you've got, you have a battle to fight and you, you must fight this battle. If you don't fight it, this thing you think that is happening privately is going to mess you up because the enemy is aiming when he's going to bring you to the public and announce to the whole world. So, that is the step you need to, to take. First is first self-deliverance, prayer, fasting, 
um, speaking the word over your heavens, abstaining from every evil appearance. Even if you open to read Bible and you see a woman wearing bra, just leave that one and carry, stop reading Bible on the phone. Carry your Bible to read, leave this phone thing. Because this phone, it is there, they put this thing, on. I've told you. You see abomination that make a desolation in the holy place. They carry a woman wearing bra and come to where you're reading, um, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. You now see a woman wearing bra where you open that psalm to read. You know, these people are very, the devil is very smart, but we are smarter because we have the Holy Ghost. So that is my candid advice to that person who is involved in pornography. Pornography is a big spirit, big one. Big one is a spirit, it must be cast out. So that is one. The second one is a too much attention. Oh, you want us to, are we, am I supposed to take the two? Or I shall allow Brafred to talk, then after we talk about the second one. Okay, you, you can take the two together, Ma. Um, you can just spend maybe one or two minutes on this. Oh, oh okay. Agenda. Okay, the second one, too much attention from the opposite sex because of my ministry. Hmm. This person that is saying too much attention because of the ministry, if he's a brother, um, again, what is the nature of this ministry that is attracting too much attention? Is he in deliverance ministry? Maybe if you're in deliverance ministry, cast demons down from brothers, leave sisters alone. And if you're a sister, you're in deliverance ministry, leave the brothers alone, cast demons from sisters. If a brother comes to you, you refer a brother to a sister and all that. This kind of ministry that others have been and your own is so special and is beginning to attract. You see, for such a person, be a little bit careful because I see an open door there. If you are now coming to minister, you become too conscious of people around you. Self-consciousness is also something, is an open door. Where you now stand, you're ministering, God has given you grace. Instead of, look, if a person is caught up in anointing and you are ministering, look where you stand. It is that anointing that is, that is taking a hold on you. You are not even seeing anything. You are caught up in what you are ministering. Because at times as your ministry, new things are even given to you there. So where is the place? If you are thinking, hey, this brother is looking at me like this. This sister is looking at me. This, this, this. You are corrupting your ministry already. What makes you think is because of your ministry that they are, if you are, maybe you are ministering the world. What if your job is to come and set up the technical, uh, this thing? You come very early in the morning, come and sweep the, the, the church, set up equipment, test the mic, do this. Which sister will be pursuing you? A brother will be pursuing you in that one. Or when you come with your moppers to come and mock the house after mopping early in the morning, then you go and change and come back to church. Is this so? The person who is feeling that is attracting too much attention from the opposition should also know what he or she is a meeting. She or she is a he or she is a meeting. I remember in those days I said copper, you know. Then I was even a young Christian. We used to have this our uh, chairman, this thing, Copper's Fellowship. Our president then, you know. He will come, he puts his glasses like this. Even the way he's ministering, he is even the one calling for attention. The thing used to annoy me. In fact, at the point I stopped calling, coming to meet in the sandbox like this. But that young man will come there. He, the way he even puts, you know, sisters, if you're there, he will come and talk. You say, you see, when you want to front slide, you know, you want to backslide, you backslide, I don't care. But me, I want to front slide. The way he even put his leg to front slide, so sisters, hey, hey. If it was so offensive to my spirit, I knew he was calling attention to himself. And sisters, we are dying. Hey, this brother, hey, brother, this. I was just looking at what is fascinating. It was so offensive. So these are things we need to watch out. If you're in spirit, please be in the spirit. If you want to marry, settle down. We say calling attention to. So how are they even coming to you? Cause for question. If assuming it's a brother, calling attention to her sisters now pestering you, and if they're pestering you, what are they telling you? If they're telling you, we love you, we want you, oh, this, 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 you are a brother in the spirit ministry with an anointing. Ha. You know what to do. You know what to do to keep them at bay. 
you, know, you, you need to minister to them and tell them, no, you will come out clearly and say, no way, I will not. It's not something, I mean, you know that they are even coming to you is to define your ministry in the first place. Maybe the enemy sent them to come and put you down in that ministry that God has started lifting you up. And in, vice versa, if it is a sister too, you are that ministry and brothers are rushing you, you better be careful. You wait, you will hear from the Lord. Forget the distractors and detractors will come. Don't look at all those. This afternoon we're in the house, we are talking about wolves in sheep clothing. So it's not only brothers again, sisters too have become wolves so in sheep clothing. Many sisters are around looking for sharp, sharp brothers. Sharp, sharp brothers. You also have to be a sharp, sharp sister and vice versa. So please let that brother, my counsel to that brother is concentrate on what the Lord has called you to do. Make sure you yourself, you are not calling attention yes, when you are needed. Let me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ma. We have to take questions from the audience. And before we get to that segment, um, Uncle Fred, if you can just lend your voice to this uh, in please two minutes because of time, please. Two, three Thank minutes. I think Sister Nelson has done a good job in addressing those two questions. Uh, uh, it's important to know that the issue of masturbation and pornography is, is a, it's, it's a big, big, big issue. It, it, can, it can mess your life up completely. And the worst part of it is that it's, it's addictive. Um, once you get hooked onto it, um, it, it destroy, I've seen this thing destroy people's lives, destroy marriages, uh, and, and, and people are at different levels in this thing. So it's, it's better you nip it in the bud quickly. If you notice you're getting into that trend, you need to get help quickly. And the steps that um, our sister have outlined are just uh, apt that you need to um, um, seek for help immediately. Uh, you, you need to seek God in prayer and in fasting. You need to stay away from everything that can, uh, because a lot of these things are seed. Once you begin to expose yourself, it's, it's, it's what you take in is what you get. It's garbage in, garbage out. And uh, uh, it's very important. And I think that uh, not to go over again because of time, everything she said is, is a problem that needs to be, to, to be dealt with. Uh, sometimes you need help. You need deliverance, serious deliverance. Uh, counsel that if anybody is toying with it, get some help quick now. Because the longer you stay in it, the more difficult it is for you to, um, to get out of it. It destroys your mind completely, destroys your whole life completely. And uh, so that's important. The other quick question, um, I think she said it. Uh, first of all, I think something is a little spooky when the brother himself begins to think uh, that um, sisters are being attracted to him because of the ministry. Um, there, there's a little problem there. Uh, I think uh, uh, the brother also should uh, be careful. The fact that that thought is coming at all uh, is an indication that um, uh, uh, you may be wanting the attention you know, secretly and uh, somehow uh, things are working and coming that way. I, I think the brother should face the call and do whatever the Lord is asking uh, him to continue to do and um, also not give room at all. Don't, uh, don't encourage, uh, if you notice that people are coming around you and uh, the opposite sex is milling around you, then cut it short. Don't, don't, don't encourage long discussions don't stay around the opposite side for too long. Do practical things. Joseph had to run uh, when she saw that she was, he was in danger. He, he ran. So if you're really in danger and you sense it, please cut off everything. Every, for now, at least until you get your sanity back and until you're sure that uh, because it could be dangerous and um, you just take one little slip, one little, and then you're just back down on your ground with your back, and uh, that will not be good. So I would advise the brother to 
um, be careful, just watch and nip everything in the world, um, cut down on everything and that is indicative of those kinds of trends that you're seeing uh, and then face what you're doing. God will help you, grace will be available for you and you'll be able to deal with it. Yeah, we're out of time. So let me just uh, stop here. Thank you so much, Uncle. Thank you so much, Auntie. It's been a beautiful time. Um, I've been able to learn so many things. Um, I trust that um, our audience as well have gotten a lot of things, a lot of help um, in the areas of challenges they might be facing related to the questions, you know, as well. Um, we'll be going over to the next segment, which is um, questions from the audience. I'll be handing over to Uncle Kola now. Thank you very much, um, Glory and uh, Chemila. You've done excellently well. Thanks so much. Uh, we know you are youth and you have the mind of the youth. And thanks to our two resource persons for the brilliant performance. Now, um, please, I just want to make some brief comments. And then while it's going on, if anyone, probably just one or two persons in the audience who want to ask questions or make comments, uh, either the fathers and mothers or any youth, just you can raise your hand, then we'll call you. And then shortly after that, we'll begin to round up with brief comments from um, our resource persons. Now, uh, just want to share an experience I had about regarding the, um, a young minister who says his ministry was um, being distracted. I wouldn't know whether the person is a male or a female, but um, I remember some years ago, someone came to me, you know, and it happens to be a music minister because I will read that Brother Moses Egidi was um, saying that this is so particular about him. Um, it's peculiar to music ministry. Now, this young, my wife will remember, this young man came to me, I was following, I was told, it was, it's from one of these, popular churches in Abuja, not from our own church. And then he said, you know, uh, somebody, some, a, a Christian sister who was in her church, in his church before, you know, introduced him to me because he was having problem in this same area of um, women, you know, sisters chasing him. And then um, when he came, he was really cast down. And then he told me that he was very much ready to serve God. And he was very prolific in the music ministry. I mean, he was a vocalist and what and what and what have you. But, you know, and then he said that the ladies wouldn't let him be. Not only that they, were, they wanted to get close to him, many of them were dragging him to sleep with them. And then... Um, I called him, I had some sessions with him to, to counsel him. But and like Brother Fred is saying, there are certain things that you also have to cut off from. You know, the appearance, eh? the appearance of the young man actually portrays somebody that should be chased. Just like the appearance of some ladies portrays someone that you know, will be chased. Now also what I tried my best to assist this young man, you know, to, to, to cut himself off. But I think, like Brother Fred said, the issue is you don't want it and then you want it. Now, yes. there are things you cut off. You know, there are some kinds, of, I mean, you are used. You know what the other, the opposite sex likes. There's a way you bob your hair, you know, and some Things you wear, the kind of chains. It's your trouser and it, 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 it has some, some chains and bangles and, and that you wear as a young man that you are just sending out a message. Now, yeah. you can, honestly speaking, this is so common in music ministry today. And one of the easiest areas to fall in Christian ministry, to fall from the field, is in the Christian ministry, it's in music ministry, you know, music ministry, counseling ministry. Now, in the music ministry, you'll find that um, if you are not spiritually minded, you are not deeply focused, you are not prayerful, and giving to a lot of fasting as a lifestyle, it's only a matter of time you will be ready to fall. I have seen several over time. Now, so what I'm just trying to amplify what Brother Fred said. There are some things you have to cut off, whether as a young man. Ladies also face the same thing. 
Now, many ladies who are into music ministry and the Lord is pushing, the Lord is giving them grace, also have this problem. But you see, you've got to put your calling before any other thing. Like uh, people always say, work before pleasure. Now, make sure that, you know, you know uh, Paul was writing to Timothy, who was a young minister. You see, if you study the life of Timothy, you discover that Timothy was a very young minister, so young that Paul knew his mother and his grandmother. So Paul had to advise him about relationship with the opposite sex. He said, relate with every older woman as a mother and relate with every young girl, every young lady as a sister. No, so I want to advise our team of young ones. Many of you are in this forum, I can see your names. You are either into music ministry or any ministry that brings you to the public. You see, the more public a ministry is in nature, the more the crucified life you should adopt. You've got to cut off some things. And then uh, there's a practice that is so common. I want to speak about the other side, which is about those who counsel. Now, um, I went for a ministry with my wife some years, some years ago. And um, then the, by the virtue of the nature of the ministry, when we returned, the president of the fellowship then, it's not in our forum, the campus ministry, we traveled for it. The president called me and he said the ministry really touched him and broke him down. And he began to tell us certain things he was doing with the young girls. I mean, some of this has never happened in our time. We go to the campuses now, and maybe during the Orient Youth Service, you know, so you find a young man of about 20, 21, who is a daddy. Papa. papa. Okay, they call them Papa and Papa. You call them Papa. I say, I say when you are 19 or 20, you have Papa. What do they call you when you are older? <laughs> you know, and then you go on pick out right six that you have a flood, ladies are around there. The ladies are on roster. I'm sure the people know what I'm they talking about. They bring food. They bring food, or the home people come to cook. And during the they, they come during the compass lord, the papa is there, and the ladies take roster, and a lot of things go on. I have counseled, I've counseled. So this young man was a president, and then um, he had to, 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 to relate with me. I related with him over time. Thank God, I believe by the grace of God for what I got later on. You know, it's now into full blown ministry. But at that time, it was really, I mean, it was really in a mess. But thank God that world, that ministry we went for, makes him there. There are many of these young people who are there. Like my sister also said, what business do you have? Eh? Counseling a lady. You are a young man of 21. You are not married. A lady is coming to tell you about her biological problems and all that. Why don't you direct her to another lady to counsel her? And in the process of trying to counsel like a lot of things happen. We have had experiences, nasty things, unprintable things that we can't mention in this forum that we both have come across. So please put your ministry first. Don't allow anything to distract you. Don't, you know, don't want it and you don't want it. Praise the name of the Lord. Then the second thing I want to just pass as a comment is uh, I'm so surprised that um, no question came regarding. Uh, Christian youths and financial sustenance. Well, Brother Fred, in his comments, you know, in answering the question, went into some of them. But I particularly, uh, I would have expected questions from young men and young women who are either in school or shortly out of school. And how mm. does a Christian young man survive financially? Now, the time when we were in school, it was possible for you to be in a university and nobody was responsible for you. We had bursary. I remember throughout my four years in university, I obtained bursary every year. And the bursary I collected from my state government, bursary was free, you're not paying back, was sufficient for me to buy meal tickets for four years. My bursary for one year was sufficient for me to buy meal tickets for four years. So the students, there were even some students who from their bursaries were sponsoring their younger ones with no parental input. Now, apart from the bursary, we had student loans, which of course people never paid back. And student loan there was about twice that of the bursary. 
So there was a lot of money. People were on motorcycles, some bought cars and all that. But you see, the time you are in now is a very precarious time. And many parents are actually not able to cope. And so how are you young people making it? First Timothy 6.10 says the love of money is the root of all evil. When we had the leadership conference in Abuja, I was on the elevator, I was telling my wife, I happened to be on the elevator with two young ladies. When the way they were dressed, you would know that they were dressed to kill any man. And the way they were making their faces to me and uh, no, 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 smoking in the, in the and then they were trying to get my attention. And honestly, I just discerned that these were undergraduates, probably from the University of Abuja or any of the campuses around. And this is so common. Go to an average hotel in, in Abuja now, or go to where we call zone four, the red light zone. Many of the ladies we find there are young ladies who are, I think they call them Ron, Ron's girls. Uh -huh. And incidentally, let me bring to your attention, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You now have some other, the other side of it. You have the young ladies who are looking for sugar daddies or those who just pay them for sex. But now, you now have instances where you have young men who are, you know, selling their bodies. You now have a group of women in their midlife, in their middle life, from about 35 to 45, 50, who are looking for young boys to satisfy their urge. This, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's happening in Abuja. I don't know whether others, it's happening in other cities. And the evil of it now is that I understand they have not gone online. It's not, but many, the modern wrong girls don't go to zone four to red light street down. I understand that they have their websites where they book them and all that. And the truth is this. If you're a Christian youth, your parents cannot meet your needs. Then you've got to sit down and address yourself in the light of your faith, you know, because it's also addictive. When many of them, when many of these people leave school, they still continue with this lifestyle. So I just want to know, no one asks the question, you have courtism, you know, you have arm robbery, young people are into hits, they call them his squad. And it's, for the young men, it's about money. For the young women, you know, it's about money too. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all, not some evil, but what? all evil. So I just want to address this. Uh, probably in, a, 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 and we're going to have, you know, a, a, a session, a Zoom session on how does a young person remain pure, you know, morally, as a young man or as a young man. I'm telling you this because I know so many young men who have been pursued by ladies. Some of these ladies are either ladies in their early 40s who are not married, or those who are divorcees, they are looking for young boys. This is real. So don't think it's just the ladies that we are talking to. No, I know what I'm talking about. We don't have enough time. We are going to hold a session on in this contemporary, in this perverted and polluted society, things that never happened in our own time. We are beginning to see them. How do you cope? The Lord will help you. Now we have somebody who's on his up. Okay, my wife has a comment. Then Sister Comfort will make a comment. I just, uh, you know, wanted to chip in one or two things. Uh, the special guests have said a lot. Uh, you know, with respect to uh, the person in uh, who is being pursued, I want you to know that it is not good luck. It is bad luck. <laughs> Even out there in the world, any man or woman that the opposite sex is pursuing, you know, is in for trouble. A lot of times they end up uh, tragically. You know, I just wanted to say it's tragedy. It's not. Uh, it's, it's, not it's not good luck. It's not good luck at all. <laughs> uh, I haven't said that. Uh, I want to comment quickly on the issue of pressure. Uh, nowadays, uh, young people in pursuit of, uh, you know, well, career and uh, affluence, uh, they run into health issues, they run into health problems. 
Nowadays, you see young persons collapsing on their tables, young executives dying prematurely, some dying on the steering, you know, just because of pressure. The Bible says that the life of a man does not consist in the abundance yeah. of the things he possesses. And uh, you know, contentment is, is key. Contentment, you know, I know, you know, and one trend I've seen among our young people is that they are not uh, ministry conscious. A lot of times they are not, they just want to build a career. They just want to build a career and write big cars. You know, some of my former students, some of them wanted to leave law school and write BMW, write G Wagon. There's no way they will not steal. Then even for those who are not stealing, they are grappling with too much. They, they have too, too much they can cope with. You know, I know that the brain is a computer. You can, you can actually, you know, put a lot into it. But what about the body? What about the body? You know, some of them are even having sicknesses that they cannot unravel because they are too much into, you know, too much treasure. Then I found out that out there, even in those churches, a lot of young people, because they want to build a career, they want to make money, you know, they are not mindful of getting married. There are a lot of young men, 40, 45, have no marriage. Yeah. And the girls, so by the time they wake up, they find out that time has gone, you know, and it now becomes difficult for them to be able to get credible persons that really love them. Like a guy told me, I don't even know if they're after my certificate or it's because they love me. <laughs> you know, because oh, after, my salary. Oh, after my salary, because it was already established. So it's because of you know beauty career, you know, we should whatever these young people are after, you know, contentment is key. Contentment is important. And like Sister also said, life is gradual. We, your parents, you know, you should look at us. How did we get to? We, we, we are not complaining because of our So it's all this sudden flight. Some of you, you know, you pity her. Oh, my parents didn't make it. So you want to, you know, hit it big. You know, please, we are not driving you crazy. We, your parents, do not want, we don't want to lose you. We don't want to lose you to the world. We don't also want you to die. There are some, some of the young people who were Christians that I used to know. But when they entered, you know, at the left school, all in the name of, you know, making it, they derailed some of their mind to autism. Because out there in the, in the business world, <laughs> nothing good comes easy. They start introducing you to certain things, you know, how to make it big, you know. Before you know it, you lose your anointing, you lose your contact with, with Christ. And at the end of the day, what will you gain? You know, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul? I just felt I should say that, especially the area of health. You know, I, I know that in some of these big companies, they give you, they pay you well, they may start with you with 400 or 500 or even more. They give you three people's job or four people's. And you don't want to lose the job. You don't want to lose the job. And you walk around the clock. Your day starts by 2 a.m. And you know, you see young people falling sick, developing sicknesses that their, you know, fathers, don't their, have. their fathers don't have. So I just want to appeal to young people through this uh, forum. The Lord will help you. Amen. Thank you. We are gradually rounding off for today. Before our resource persons give us their final word, uh, Sister Comfort, can you please come up with your question or contribution? Praise God. Yeah. I was debating whether or not I should speak sitting before our elders here. But I'm going to take my liberty in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Many of the things I wanted to say, uh, Brother Cole and Sister Remy just hammered on them. But let me start from the last one, Sister Remy said, you know, about our young people and the trend these days, the the things that we have discovered. And then she's very, very correct. I hope that the young people here are listening. It's not that anybody wants to run your life for you, but to give you counsel that will help you. 
We've discovered that these days, you know, some of these young people even get married. They're talking about the rat race. Marry and going into marriage, they've already made up their mind. Even the matter of having children is pushed aside. They've decided in their hearts that uh, for the first how many years, no children. They want to focus on career. You know, so before we even start praying for some young people, let us be counseling them because some of them is deliberate. It's not that the devil is um, playing games. This is the work of their own hands, you know. <laughs> anyway, so that's just, uh, that was not originally what I wanted to say. You know, um, I was very concerned about the first question that was asked, the question that, um, I don't remember how they asked the question, something about uh, fellowship not being exciting or something like that. And Sister Nonso wanted to know, she said she would have wanted to get more information, but that from what she knows, she knows that uh, some of the young people say that fellowship is boring, it's not exciting and all of that. And so they leave. So I just wanted to, um, will I say counsel slash say a few things to that effect? You know, the impression of what the young people mean by being boring, or rather, there are some really weird ideas that some young people have about a fellowship being exciting because they look at the systems and they want those same things that they see in some of these new generational churches to be brought into this present arrangement. And that is not going to work. When I say what they see outside, like in the systems, like some of these big churches, one of the big churches here is uh, this John Austin's the, the son, Joel Austin's church, it's like a stadium. And when worship is going on, the lights are dim. It's like you are in a theater house. You dim the uh -huh. light and the lights are flashing. Not only are they dim, they are flashing. The way they do in a, a theater house, you know, when somebody's doing drama in a theater house, the light is on them. Mm -hmm. So, but this one, this light is moving left, right, and center. And it gives a false sense of anointing. I don't know how to put it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When people are worshiping, they have a way that they do it. I've had some young people who don't like the songs we sing in this end time move. And the song we sing are from the song book. They're from the scriptures. They're scriptural songs. Some are vocalized that they don't like it. So what I mean is they want certain kind of singing, certain kind of arrangement, certain kind of songs. Rap music is a popular one here. And here's the deal. You know, we, the older people sometimes in a bid to not want to lose the younger generation begin to indulge them i think that is flat out wrong you know i'm just saying it here because something i've noticed in a bid not to lose them we lower the standard and we're like well let them sing the rap here let them i think that is really wrong we are not to lower the bar yeah. Because we don't, we should encourage the young people to rise up. We need to encourage them to rise up and tell them and pray that they have a genuine encounter with God. And then their ministry will be anointed rather than bringing some things into this end time move because we don't want to lose the young people and have everything watered down and then we will not recognize this move again before we know what is going on. You know, it's really sad when in a fellowship, the youngest person is 40. There was a fellowship. The youngest person in that fellowship was 40. Yes, I know. We don't want to use, lose the young people. So we should be praying for them. But nevertheless, we are not to lower the bar because we want to bring them in. And I'll say one final thing, you know, based on, because there's a lot of iniquity going on, especially here in the US. The last question, you know, Sister Nosso said to, abstain from all appearance of evil. If you already have a problem along certain lines, you take physical actions. Like you should not be found in a clubhouse. You know, there are clubhouses here, I don't know about Nigeria. You know, a lot of the Christians, some of the Christians here, even in the systems, you know, weekdays, they are in clubhouses. Sundays, they are in church, mingle the two together. You know, that's not supposed to be. And like Brother Connor said, you know, certain dressings. There was a hairstyle those days called Girls Follow Me. You know, <laughs> if as a brother, you have that kind of hairstyle, God forbid, 
you are in my big <laughs> trouble. And I would like to say sometimes the spirit is also involved. You know, like Sister said, you know, it is a problem. Don't maybe again such a person may have an overblown impression about himself. You know, the death to self message is to be brought to that aspect too, where you think that maybe everybody is uh, coming up to you and everybody is doing this to you. It may be true. It may not also be true. It might just be an overblown uh, impression about self, which also needs to die. You know, if there's a problem in that area, like they said, number one, one thing you should do, a brother in ministry that says girls are coming, you should not be visiting sisters alone. Go with another brother. Practical steps. Okay, don't go sampling the food of sisters. You are here eating this today, eating that tomorrow, you know. And uh, just practical steps to take. Why prayerfully looking up to God for deliverance? Because it might be that the devil is also sending such to truncate your destiny. Don't con confuse, get it confused and say it's because you are very handsome or you are very pretty. That's why everybody is coming. If it is a girl, you know, praise God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Comfort. Uh, she's speaking from Atlanta. And so she, she was giving us the, the comment relative to her area there. Yeah, some of these things they're talking about also happen in Nigeria. Thank you very much. I think we've had a very great session this, uh, this evening. Uh, as usual, you know, so many things to say, but we don't have enough time. But um, some other uh, topics are coming up. We are going to actually have a session in the nearest future to speak more on politics. We discovered that quite a number of our young people are asking questions about politics. Uh, I, I know that we are going to have a balanced session, a whole session on that. I have had some young people speak to me about politics and feel that um, we should not be totally negative. And I tell them we are not totally negative, but there is caution. So we'll take a whole session on that because from one or two questions tonight, I know that some of our young ones feel a call into politics. But I'm sure by the time we have that session, you get to know whether you really have the call or you just want something else. So thank you all very much. I'll just ask um, Brother Fred and Sister Nunso, maybe just in about a minute, what's the final word? Just a, like a party word, briefly, for the youths. Who goes first, Nunso? Uh, okay. <clears throat> I will just... Um... Should I go first or Nunso goes first? Uh, Brother Fred, you can come on. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Nunso. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, let Nonso go on. You know, okay, so right. Nonso, please come on. Yeah. Uh, okay. I just want to what end. Nonsos? Yeah. Okay. I just want to end with this um, Bible verse for young people in uh, 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity for the young man. That is what you need. Stay with your God. Stay by your God. Always look inward. Solution to your problem is not outside. It is inside. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Make out time. Take away all the noise. All these things we are discussing are noises. Noises around us. The enemy wants to use it to distract, you know, the young men, because the young people are energetic. So the enemy puts all these things, all this drama around them to distract them. But please, I say, take away this noise. Draw yourself inwards. Look inward. The Lord will speak to you, and you find out that you will make good success and you'll be prosperous. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Rafael. Yeah, brother, you can come on, please. Yeah, uh, well, um, just thank God for uh, his help today. And each time I think about the youth or the young person, or indeed uh, all of us, um, this is a most difficult time to be alive. Um, the challenges are enormous. Uh, I do not have the words to describe the 
the bombardments that the average young man is going through today, the average young girl. And that is what is uh, coming out in all the questions that we have attempted to treat today. And our young our youths in the church are not immune um, from all that is happening around us. Uh, the pressure is enormous. The challenges are enormous. Uh, take a look at our country today. Some of the things that uh, we're going through, young people are the one bearing the brunt of most of the things that is happening uh, in our country. They see what is going on. They see all the contradiction, the insecurity, the injustices, the inflation that we are faced with, the unemployment that we have. We have graduates who have left university for 10, 15 years and have no job. And it's, it's really a difficult world. And, and I just feel for the young people how they're able to navigate. Uh, uh, Brother Kola was talking about finances and dealing with situation, uh, inflation, a loaf of bread that we used to buy at 120 is going for seven, 800 Naira now. Uh, it, it's just an impossible. And you think that these young people are immune, you think they don't see this, the conflicts they are going through is enormous and uh, the pressures that people are going through. I want the young people to talk, to, to connect. And I want the older ones to support our young people. It's a traumatic world globally and nationally. We have a lot of our young people who are migrating out of the country. It's not easy anywhere. They, they are facing oh. challenges, raising challenges of survival, challenges of, of, of of, of moral decadence is everywhere. They, we just came out of a pandemic and, and everybody was on a lockdown. The trauma of that pandemic is still, is still something that many young people have not come out of. And now you have all the global things that are happening, which I don't want to go to. But I just want to speak to the young people to encourage them. Uh, uh, the changes they are going through, the things they experience, that um, they need to just look up to God and, 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 and seek for help and connect, connect with good people, connect with uh, brethren, connect with elders, connect with fathers and mothers. Fathers and mothers must also show understanding, connect with the young people, don't, don't leave them alone. Let's, let's give them, they need all the support because the world is, 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 is a crazy world. That we, it's traumatic. The trauma is when you sit and talk to them that you know the trauma. We're talking about issue of morality, an issue of pornography, an issue of maturation and development. An average youth, adolescent, they are maturing faster than they, they used to be mature. In those good old days, and yeah. young ladies get to puberty at 15, 16. But today, people mm. are becoming sexually capable at the age of 10. Mm. I mean, eight years old. I saw a case mm. of people are uh, attaining puberty, going through their first menses. Parents don't care to support. They don't even, they don't know what's going on. The, the primary and sexual uh, sexual characteristics are coming on board. They are dealing with so the internet is there, mm. and uh, they go there to get all kinds of information. You need to know what's going on in our secondary schools. You need to know what's going on in our university. The issue of drug, the issue of depression, the issue of of of, of you know uh, mental health issues mm. are just and the young people are the ones. I, I feel for young people and pray that the Almighty God will help our young people. We need to support them. We need to build bridges and, and help reach them and encourage them to know that the Lord God of heaven will continue to renew their strength and help Amen. them through this most, most, most difficult. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Kola. Thank you for Amen. Thank support. you very much. I'm so grateful for that, Father Lee. <laughs> And professional counsel and advice. I think we should pray now, and then the worship team, Abuja worship team, will give us a, a parting song. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for tonight. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for grace. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for all those who have participated, both as resource persons and as audience. Thank you, Lord, for our brother Fred, our sister Nonso. Thank you for the grace you have given them to answer <clears throat> the questions, to relate with the youth. Thank you for even the fathers and the mothers on the platform tonight who have listened, who have participated, and who, oh God, have, have, have borne pleasures also as parents. We thank you for Glory. We thank you for Chemela. We just thank you for the grace you've given them to coordinate this session. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. We are very grateful, Lord. Father, we are praying, oh God, that you will help our young people in this generation that is corrupt, that is evil, abominable. But Lord, you have said that in the midst of a corrupt and perverse generation, we should shine as light. Mm. Lord, we receive grace for these young people to shine as light. Amen. Well, we know that quite a number of them are going through pressures. They can't even, some don't even understand what they are going through. Lord, to be so jammed up and there seems to be no way of escape. Especially in Nigeria, some can't even see any future. But Lord, we call upon your name that the ministry of tonight will give hope unto our young ones. Amen. We ask Heavenly Father <clears throat> that we, the fathers and the mothers, will take them up in prayers because we know they are facing challenges we never faced. Mm. Lord, we pray also that the young ones will bend their ears to listen to counsel. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for tonight's program. As we all live, we ask that your presence will go with us, mm. that the, the refreshing of tonight will take us very far. By the time we come back, the month of November, <clears throat> let your grace be abundant upon us. Mm. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the Abuja worship team. Lord, they've always been there for us. We ask, oh God, that you multiply your grace upon them. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. God bless you. Abuja worship team, just give us parting mm -hmm. Amen. Love bless you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Start also, thank you. Glory. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. The thank technical you. group. Thank bless you. you. Bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, God bless everyone. Yeah, are you muted? I'm just watching to you. are muted. I'm mm -hmm. worship team is muted. I can't hear you. They are playing, but they can't. Thank you. 
God bless you. Safe journey home. Have a good trip back home. The Lord bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>